to the history of its discovery. And then I will uh, present uh, some benefits of using archival resources to reconstruct it. Uh, however, I'll try also to reveal some aspects of not quite known activity of European archaeologists in Ottoman Sri Lanka. And finally, I will conclude with some remarks about the value of such archives exploration. Uh, there is not much regions in North Africa more favored by nature than Sri Lanka, and this is not only my opinion. According to Herodotus, one of the most fertile cornlands in the world, with the soil well watered by springs, attracted Greek settlers already in 7th century BC. From that moment, the region at the western outskirts uh, of the Greek world developed harmoniously, also under Ptolemaic and Roman rule. When in 7th century AD, the Arab conquest of North Africa put the end to the classical civilization, Sri Lanka suddenly became almost completely unknown. Since the Renaissance, the imagination of humanists and antiquarians uh, was captivated by the ancient tales of the gardens of uh, Hesperides, magnificent Cyrene Athens of uh, Africa, but Sri Lanka's political isolation after the Ottoman conquest gave reason to the visible delay in archaeological recognition of the area. Europeans uh, could not visit it before the 18th century, and even in the uh, 19th century, travels were not still um, numerous. Yet, short, the history of discoveries made in Sri Lanka enables us capture and follow significant stages in the evolution of archaeological interest from antiquarianism to scientific archaeology pursued by scholars both on site and behind their desk. In this uh, multifaceted uh, history, two aspects seem to be the most important, topogra uh, topographic research and archaeological and collecting activity made by people who traveled to Sri Lanka or stayed there for some time. Therefore, let me present a short outline of their journeys, uh, which I divided in few phases, taking as a reference point the manner and scope of Sri Lanka's recognition. The first topographical uh, uh, identifications are related to the early stage of, of travel, but the really systematic research works started in the beginning of the 19th century. A significant milestone in knowledge of Sri Lanka were the results of two independent uh, expeditions. The first one, organized under auspices of the Colonial Office and British Admiralty, was led by two brothers, Henry William, an artist, and Frederick Williams, a captain in Royal Navy Beach. The second one was organized by French painter Jean uh, Pemont Cachot, in response to a competition announced by French Geographical Society. The results were quickly published and appreciated not only in the uh, academic circles, even if the archaeological survey was only uh, one of the uh, aims of these expeditions. Uh, both publications became a kind of guidebooks to the region, which all later travelers had to use. They also provided information of perfectly preserved ancient monuments, inter alia uh, sculptures. Without them, the new phase of search for beautiful objects would not develop. During this phase, political reasons and travel restrictions put diplomats accredited to the Ottoman port in a privileged position, but there were also some explorers from outside the diplomatic, diplomatic uh, circles. At the end of 19th century, 
uh, a tense political situation and a fear of the authorities in Constantinople of the European expansionist aspiration put an end to any archaeological activity and dramatically limited possibility to travel. Reconstructing the process of discovery of Cyrenaica, we must, uh, first of all, refer to the travelers' accounts published as separate books, articles, reports, and letters. Their archaeological value is obvious and beyond discussion. However, to create the panorama of travelers' activities as broad as possible, it is necessary to analyze documents in the archives, written and iconographical as drawings and photos. <laughs> because of different reasons, these de the documents were never published. Nonetheless, they provide many relevant information, <coughs> complementary to uh, the published works. Now just a few examples. Uh, many field uh, drawings constitute very important evidence and sometimes the only evidence available of lost but at least partly destroyed monuments. As here, we have a field made drawing by Bici of one of the theaters of Ptolemais. Uh, as, as you can see uh, now, the theater um, uh, has strongly deteriorated since the beginning of uh, 19th century and many of uh, recorded features uh, no longer exist. A lot of important information uh, comes from early photographs uh, taken by uh, Murdoch um, Smith and Edwin Porter during their archaeological expedition in Cyrene uh, in uh, 1861. These pictures uh, kept uh, until now in the British Museum have multi-value. Uh, a dozen of them uh, recorded many architectural features in the state of conservation just before the exploration started. Very interesting details come from the photographs of sculptures uh, discovered during the excavation conducted in many points of ancient sites. Uh, of ancient city. Illustrating the progress in field made documentation to show at the same time its methods. All excavated sculptures were transferred in the vicinity of the town chosen as travelers' residence. Uh, you can see tools and instruments necessary for transport, um, and then they were photographed with use of various blankets or reed mats serving as backgrounds. These photos have also some additional value. Uh, like here, the statue of uh, Dionysus found in few pieces. Uh, on picture can be seen with the right arm broken below the shoulder and the left hand holding a bunch of grapes. When the statue arrived in the British Museum, the torso, head and left hand were listed as separate items. Initially, they were kept in storage. Later, the sculpture was transferred to the Museum in Scotland in Edinburgh and exhibited, but this time with the right head. Uh, however, it seems to be incomplete because the brief uh, of a left hand seen on the photograph. This hand was rediscovered in the British Museum among the materials stored in the sculpture basement uh, as a found unregistered in, and attributed to the excavation of John Patrick Wood at Ephesus, uh, um, found, refounded only recently thanks to the photograph could be identified as belonging to the statue of Dionysus. There are, of course, many other examples to prove the value of uh, archi uh, archival sources not to be uh, overestimated, plus uh, inscription, stripes, sculpture, or frescoes. This, however, is so certainly not the end of the story, even if from purely archaeological point of view that is. In my own researches, many in um, Archive de Musée National in Paris and Central Archives of British Museum in London, I soon realized that the new, much broader questions should be posed regarding, in particular, those documents concerning archaeological activity that were never intended to be published. So uh, let's look uh, inside the French and British archives to find out the political context and social background of the activity of European archaeologists in um, Ottoman Cyrenaica. When in the second half of the 18th century, Winkelmann published his History of Ancient Art, in which he appreciated first of all the Greek classical art, a mania for antiquity reached the peak. Winkelmann's legacy has the strong impact on the understanding of antiquity as well as birth and development of public museums in France and Britain. 
As the collection boosted the prestige uh, of the nation that financed them, the state's interest in Cyrenaica doesn't surprise. It was late, in fact, that the region was a Greek settlement. It was thought that the ruins could contain masterpieces of Greek art, filling some of the gap uh, in the great chain of art. But at the same time, we should keep in mind that Libya, the gateway to Central Africa, has occupied a strategic position at the crossroad of major caravan roads, ensuring trade between Europe and Africa. Uh, so, uh, uh, Cyrenaica attracted the attention for both archaeological and political reasons. As I mentioned before, the accounts of Pichy Brothers and Pasha Mark uh, broke through in studies of Srenaika. These two expeditions define as well the beginning of a uh, few decades of rivalry between France and England in the recognition of the region, but at the same time the rivalry of the hegemonic role in this part of North Africa. Analyzing of letters and reports written by travelers, diplomats residing in Srenaika and their recipients, the representatives of the government of state institutions let us observe the birth and maturation of informal colonialism and the importance of role that archaeology played in this process. The most spectacular was the activity of French and British diplomats. They would often invest their own fortunes in exploration, research, and trade collection. By exporting antiquities, diplomats laid the great uh, groundwork for the development of the great museums uh, of Paris and London. The first Westerner uh, excavations in Cyrenaica uh, were a direct result of British expedition. In late 20s of 19th century, Lord Bathurst from the colonial office requested the English consul in Tripoli, Colonel Hammer Warrington, to collect sculptures seen by travelers, uh, he even obtained additional funds enabling him to begin exploration of Cyrene. Uh, one of the reasons of this rush was the necessity in situation to prevent another consul extracting uh, antiques. As he announced in his report, he had good reason to believe, quotation, the French wished to excavate both at Cyrenaica and as well as Lebda. The activity of British has not been unnoticed by French authorities, and Warrington's conviction of growing competition between Britain and France over the exploration of Sri Lanka was by no means groundless. Two decades later, when uh, Joseph Batier de Bourville, French consul in Tripoli, sought to be appointed vice consul in Benghazi in Sri Lanka, one of his overreading objectives was the, was the exploration of ancient cities in order to obtain antiquities. Uh, the excavation, as he declared in his report sent to the French Ministry of Foreign Affairs, would serve science, but primarily discovered monuments would impact of, uh, on the prestige of France. Implicit, he made some suggestions about the increasing British presence in Sri Lanka, which, as he supposed, would play an important role in modern history due to its geographical position and fertility of lands. Vatier de Bourville, as vice consul in Benghazi, was granted financial support to conduct uh, excavations, which uh, result, he reported, to both the Minister of Foreign Affairs and Academy uh, des Expeditions Bellet. Therefore, from the big, very beginning, uh, he has some difficulties. The opening, uh, opening in the middle of the 19th century of the Ottoman Museum in Constantinople and the police aimed at regulating and consequently limiting the export of antiquities from the territory of the empire <coughs> hindered the archaeological research undertaken in Sri Lanka. It explains why, despite requests uh, submitted to the Minister of Foreign Affairs, and despite the support of the French government, all attempts to obtain a film and failed. Additionally, the state's interest disappeared because of the financial and economic crisis in France uh, in the aftermath of the fall of the July monarchy. Uh, however, Batier de Bourville managed to send to Paris several hundreds of items, mainly terracotta and vases. The objects were both on antiquarian market and discovering during illegal uh, digs. The correspondence uh, uh, kept in the central uh, archives of British Museum proves that the British were concerned about Batier de Bourville, uh, the Batier de Bourville's activity. Uh, that's why uh, the trustees of the British Museum decided 
uh, to buy a selection from the collection of antiquities excavated in the Surenaika district from the British Vice Consul in Benghazi, Francis Wery. The same happened to the following uh, co uh, co collection of following Vice Consul Frederick Crow, uh, who, after excavating tombs in Benghazi on his own, sold the fruit of his labor to the British Museum. Despite this acquisition, collection of Srenaika's monuments in British Museum was still much less numerous than in Louvre. That's why the trustees decide to support the idea of expedition organized by two English officers, uh, uh, Robert Martha Smith and uh, Newton, with some archaeological experience. When the plan of expedition at their own expenses were accepted by the government, the Foreign Office declared to provide the assistance procuring a few money uh, to carry out uh, excavations and export antiquities. The Admiralty to put ships on the travelers' disposal. Uh, finally, the British Museum would grant the explorers a subsidy. During 10 months' stay uh, in Cyrene, uh, Smith an excavation, Smith wrote uh, seven reports to Lord Lassen from Colonial Office with a full account of the excavation and uh, plans, copies of the inscription, and first of all, photographs. These pictures were never intended to be published. The travelers used photographic apparatus and state-of-the-art technology just to record the results of exploration in aim to secure the interest of state to finance their excavation. One of the progress was, uh, uh, was documented, the funds were um, uh, uh, guaranteed. Uh, the next council in uh, the expedition was a national um, uh, triumph. The next council in Benghazi was especially sent uh, uh, and granted a sum of 10 pounds to purchase Greek antiquities and to explore the cities and cemeteries of Srinagar. Uh, so, uh, both French and English diplomats and excavators made it clear that a significant Significant motivation for their work was the benefit accruing to both art and science from transferring their find to centers of Western European civilization so they could be properly studied and appreciated. Fortunately, from the middle uh, of 19th century, um, uh, the progress in archaeology led the museum's authorities to different attitudes toward the collection, the collected, uh, the collected uh, object. And uh, just to conclude, studying uh, the case of uh, uh, the Surenaika, we can, uh, we can appreciate the value uh, of archive sources as a multi-level. The first level is archaeology of Surenaika, that's obvious. Uh, the second level is the history of archaeology in transition from the scientific stage to scientific one, understood as methods of excavation and documentation, changing view of ancient uh, art, uh, appreciation of different categories of objects, but the third level is political background of archaeology as a form of hegemonic knowledge used to prove the superiority of great powers and to justify their colonial agenda. agendas. However, just in the end, my own set remark as a member of Polish archaeological mission to Ptolemy is one of the most eminent ancient cities in Libyan Sri Lanka, I wonder and worry if the result of our work Published or archived would constitute in the future the only source of knowledge about the sets uh, irrevocably destroyed and plundered by the world. Thank you.